very pleased to be joined now by Owen Grant Innes, who is an artist and author of the book Duty, A Love Letter to Queen Elizabeth II. Welcome to the programme, Owen. Um, I've been reading some of your comments about your relationship with the Queen, and I just wondered if, in your own words, you could share that with us. Yeah, hi, hi Natasha. Nice to speak to you tonight. So, um, the book starts and with my relationship with the Queen when I was five years old. I was a child of the Commonwealth, grew up in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. And when we went to school in the 1960s, we would sing God Save the Queen, as we called it in Canada, which is, of course, the national anthem here. And so every morning I would stand with my classmates, each of us beside our desks, standing facing the front of the, the classroom, whether it be a beautiful, majestic portrait of the Queen and you know, there would be a, a loudspeaker where the music came out and we would follow in song. So we would do this day after day and sort of week after week. And at that young age, I began to form this relationship with the Queen. And I was also, a, a, you know, a, a young LGBTQ child. So I was sort of a bit confused in the world, didn't really understand where I fit in. And there was a sense of isolation and, and loneliness but somehow through the Queen and this connection that she gave me to the wider world, to the Commonwealth, to the history of, you know, the history of the UK and mm. the history of my ancestors who originally came from the UK, there was a sense of connection, unification, which, which was a solace and gave me a, a place to belong. So that's, that was the genesis of of the book in a way. It's interesting that you say that because we actually had a, a call, I think it was my show on Thursday, from a, a Sikh community leader who was talking about how even though Britain is very multicultural and you've got these people of different races and, and religions living side by side, when you have someone like the Queen, it's this common touchstone that everybody can relate to. And this big thing in common actually helps to bring some kind of cohesion and, and sense of belonging to the community, which seems to be what you're describing is kind of somebody who could have felt like they were an outsider being drawn in. Yeah, no, it, exactly. And I, what's been fun about this project is because it's a book and social media, I've had a lot of contact with different people and especially um, friends from my youth. And I would hear their stories and, you know, friends who were new Canadians or children of more recent immigrants from non-Commonwealth countries would say, yeah, yeah, me too. The Queen sort of helped me connect and define myself as a new Canadian and helped me understand being part of that culture. So I think she is a unifier and you see that over and over again in so many ways. And do you feel any kind of tension because there are other parts of the Commonwealth, you know, Will and Kate recently went to the Caribbean and received a very frosty reception. We're, we're learning more about the brutality of the colonization process. And there's a, a lot of questions being asked about whether it's even appropriate to, to celebrate the royal family in the context of everything that we know about that. Um, do you feel any kind of tension in wholeheartedly getting behind the Queen? I do not personally, I understand that, you know, as, as, you know, as history sort of unfolds, that certain nations may need to divorce themselves from, you know, the Queen as head of state or, you know, I haven't really learned of anyone who wants to leave the Commonwealth, but people need to self-define and we're in a, an era where that can happen. So I support that. For me personally, you know, I grew up in a country that was colonized by the French and, mm. and the British. And, you know, my ancestors lived that life. And I also know that they, for the most part, people who came to the colonies worked very hard in a land that was freezing cold, full of insects. I and mean, the challenges they felt or they they came across to build what is a really great solid nation and I think Canada is one of the best and fairest nations on the world in the world so yes many horrible things happen as a result of colonialization but also some good things happen so especially this weekend I think it's about uh, like focusing on the positive and maybe on Monday we get back to making the world a better place but I think there is a lot to be thankful for 
that's happened in the in the seven decades of Her Majesty's reign. If we look at the human rights across the board, women's rights, gay rights, we're at a much better place today than we were in in 1952. And you know, the Queen, as head of state, has signed a lot of those changes into law and has walked with us hand in hand as we become a, a better place. So, yeah, that, I'm mm-hmm. I'm quite happy to to celebrate who we are today and and and, and the accomplishments of. Her Majesty. And what's been your favourite part of the Jubilee celebrations so far? Well, I think um, for me, the, the, I participated in the, uh, Trooping the Colour. I went down with a, a really dear friend who came down from North Wales. And, you know, we spent a good hour just trying to get through the, the barriers and the crowd control into the... We ended up in St. James Park and... You know, we finally uh, found our, our place and we stood there and watched the big screen they, they had in place. We couldn't really see anything live, but we saw it, you know, projected on the screen. But we were surrounded by thousands upon thousands of other people who came from all across this nation and from other countries to celebrate this moment. And there's a kind of energy when you're in a crowd like that where there is... You know, you can tell there's people from all aspects and segments of society, mm. but there's this one thread, this common thread that we all hold dear and holds us together. So that was a really special thing to witness. And, you know, I, it, it's once in every 70 years, so it's it pretty amazing. Owen Grant Innes there. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Artist and author of Duty, A Love Letter to Queen Elizabeth II.